going on, y'all? It's Bunna Whip. We here at the corner of Weston and Eglinton here in the west part of Toronto. And we're here to look at a lot of the housing developments that are now being built up and developed here in this historical neighborhood. You know, it's been around the city for a long, long, long time, but there's a lot of changes coming about within the next couple of years. So that's what we go and explore, right? But first, hold on. We got to explore a few things, man. Like I said, my name is Bunna Whip and we out here in the city. We got to make sure we come correct. You feel me? So. Come through, yo. We gonna do a little drip check. We gonna make sure what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Got the fitted new era. You know what I mean? We stay cleaned up, Air Max and whatnot. You know, stay fly. You know what I'm saying? Real fur, cause it's the winter time. You gotta make sure you straight out here, out here, all right? So that's what we doing. Come through, follow along. We gonna check out this whole community, all right? Here at uh, the top of the stairs, the infamous stairs, you know, right along Eglinton by the bridge. Um, and as you can see, this is where the development for the Crosstown train starts. Right across the street, we got uh, one of the terminus stations, Mount Dennis, and that's the neighborhood we in. Mount Dennis, like I said, is a very historical neighborhood here in this city. Um, a lot of low-rise development, a lot of older churches, as you can see around here. Um, old Victorian style homes, stuff like that. But just behind me is uh, one of the new uh, stations that they're integrating, um, the airport station and stuff that goes all the way to Pearson. And they're planning for a mixed use development just behind these houses here. And it's scheduled to be about maybe 20 stories. Um, so that definitely changes the density here in the city. But you know, one thing that we gotta talk about, the price, right? You know, how much is it? Um, who's it affordable for? And will the local residents really have access to it in terms of, you know, rent to own? A lot of the people in this community rent their properties and, you know, if they're looking to purchase, you know, they should be able to buy something within their community and make it affordable. So, you know, we're gonna look into all of that. I think we passed some development signs along the way. So we're gonna uh, check that out. And these stairs, man, they're infamous, man. I mean, me and my friends used to, you know, kind of run through this area, you know, when we were younger and stuff like that, running from cops, just getting into trouble, doing whatever, but we're grown now, you know? So we're, we're definitely speaking on much more of a grown, you know, topic, but you know, we don't forget, you know, the moments that we experience in the city too. That's all part of Toronto culture. That's all part of Toronto history, right? So we ain't forgetting about that. And that's why we speaking on this today, all right? So come check it out. We got more stories on the way, all right? Come check it out. Come Got the Kodak Land buildings. That building used to be a part of the Kodak Kodak Land facility about 100 years ago. They kept that building and revamped it. Now it's gonna be part of the whole uh, station. Mount Dennis right there, man. They got, they got a lot of things going on over there. Let's see, how, let's see how close we can get without trying to intrude in people's backyards and shit. We ain't trying to put nobody on blast, but trying to check out a few things so you can see it from here it's on the other side so we're gonna take a look at it but like I said this is the uh, the train integration station so they're gonna meet here the airport train and the new crosstown train that's gonna go from here all the way to the east side Kennedy station you know, so they're definitely making it multimodal. They're definitely building more transit and more accessibility, more rapid transit so people can get more places faster. That's a good thing. But again, we're gonna talk about the affordability and make sure that it's affordable for the people here too, right? So come on through, we're gonna go under the bridge. We're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna see what's up, all right? Come follow me as Bunna Whip, man. So check this out. As you can see, it's a planning notice board talking about the development that's actually happening right there across the street. Um, and I said 20 stories before, but check this out. They're saying it could go as high as 49 stories. That's a huge skyscraper of a building. And I ain't mad at the density. Toronto's growing. This is the biggest metropolis in this whole country. I ain't mad at the density. Let's just talk about how many of those units or floors or levels are gonna be affordable. You got a multi-mixed use 
thing going on over here. You know there's gonna be stores and retail at the bottom. That's good, that provides accessibility for stores. I don't know if this no frills over here is gonna get integrated into that plan, give people a chance to shop, to eat, to dine, etc. But where's the planning at, right? Where's the affordability, you know? Where's the, uh, you know, uh, applicability to allow people and local residents to actually get something that they can call their own, right? Whether they're paying a thousand a month, fifteen hundred a month for their one or two bedroom apartment, as does a development like this, you know, allow them to really, you know, improve their livelihood. You know, their families growing, they're having children, etc. You know, it, it, you got to count them in too. There's gonna be a whole lot of new residents, so that's what's up. But you know, don't uh, don't exclude the existing and the old ones, right? That's the only uh, point that we're trying to make here is it's got to be fully integrated within the community so that once it's finished, it's full of old residents, new residents, future residents, etc. And it feels economically balanced. That's really how you achieve economic stability within a huge growing metropolis like this. So it's very important to see that, yeah, they put their big notice here so that, you know, people could know about it. But, you know, we're going to look into the details. They got planning details at the bottom. We're going to look into that and see about all of that. But yeah, it's very important to uh, definitely acknowledge, right? Because the density in this area is going to change massively. They're not going to build no new transit without getting the developers their, uh, their, their uh, money as well. So, you know, what does the future look like for the city? Who knows? But that's why Bundle Whip's out here to find that out, all right? So let's check it out. Keep walking. You got Eglinton across, uh, across the way right there. You know, you see they're finishing construction. Should have been done, but I mean, that's, that's, that's a story for another... Uh, for another vlog, you feel me? Got my nigga Canada Geese out here, you know what I'm saying? Chilling. But you wanna leave them alone, trust me. You don't, they don't want no problems and we don't want no problems, you heard? Man, it is a beautiful day though. I'll tell you that. Especially for like, what, mid-March? Shit is crazy. I still have to bust out the fur, you know, but I'm not cold at all. It's, it's super nice out, you know. The other day, though, I'll tell you. Woo! That's the thing, living in Canada, you just never know, right? You just never know. Prices. I don't know. I don't know what the hell we doing out here, yo. Shit is fucking ridiculous. Here. All right, cool. So right now we're at uh, Black Creek, Black Creek Road, and uh, Eglinton. And behind me is uh, one of the newest recreation centers built by the City of Toronto um, in conjunction with Metrolinx. Um, it was part of a partnership to uh, you know, bring more accessibility in terms of sports and recreation to this area, especially again with the new development that I mentioned, the new housing development, the new transit development, etc. So this behind me right here is a York Recreation Center. Um, it opened at about maybe 2019, 2020. Don't exactly quote me on the year exactly, but around that time, right? So it's relatively new, pretty state of the art. I've been inside of it. The only reason why we're not going inside, they got all these filming regulations, city of Toronto, blah, blah, blah. Plus people are, you know, doing personal stuff, their workouts and stuff. We're not gonna go put them on blast like that. We're gonna respect their privacy, right? But um, yeah, it's got a state of the art, you know, um, ball court, swimming court, um, fitness center, um, 
daycare. It's, it's got it all. They, they definitely is full of amenities. And again, free, still accessible for all City of Toronto residents. You just got to show ID and stuff like that. You get to use the services free of charge. And um, yeah, you know, that's uh, pretty much the rundown there. Um, this is actually a good part of the development that I like because people are going to need accessibility to fitness and recreation, right? And who knows where people within this community were going before they built this or if they never would have built it, right? But right here, accessibility close to the uh, Mount Dennis Station, Black Creek and Eglinton. This is where we at. It's Bunna Whip. Holla. So, you know, this kind of concludes our walk, you know, through uh, the area or through the community on long, along Eglinton. The next few blocks, you know, we're going to enter another community, um, but that's for another day. Um, I hope, you know, this video or this vlog was informative. It taught you all a lot about, you know, what's happening in the area, where the hotspots are, where the new development is, most importantly, and how the area is going to grow. Now, I know you're probably wondering, what's a dude like me speaking on something like this, right? Well, my academic background is in urban planning and development. So a lot of this stuff I actually not just studied in school, but it's very dear and close to my heart because this is the city I grew up in as well. So it's important to me and should be important to y'all because this is our city. If we don't talk about these things that are happening and in the right way to make sure things are affordable for the right people, then you know developers and rich companies are just gonna have their way, not just with our city, but with our, in, with our environment, with our community. And that's not what we need, right? We don't need to get priced out of our area and out of our community, sent to the periphery and sent out of our city like it's happening in major cities all across North America. Let's make Toronto the example that other cities essentially can't be or you know aren't maybe we can lead by example and show that affordability and equity could be a thing here in this city right so that's why i'm speaking on it now thanks for tuning in like i said this is bunna whip for plugging the dot we're going to cover more communities along eglinton following the progress of the crosstown which is going to go from west to east that's 19 kilometers and they're building more out west to go to the airport we're just going to cover the development we're going to cover the stories we're going to speak to some residents too we didn't do that today but we're going to get into that some more all right we here in the winter time we're in the middle of the snow but you know it is what it is that's not going to stop us from being outside we always going to be outside discovering the truth and finding out what's going on all right Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, this is Bunna Whip. Plug in a dot. Holla at me, all right? Oh, and new music coming out soon. Don't forget, new music coming out soon on the Plug in the Dot label, all right? Free Juggy. And, you know, shout out to everybody coming out. You know, the T.O. scene, the T.O. music scene. We ain't forget about y'all, all right? Holla ownership uh, are able to live in their communities and not feel that they're at risk of being uprooted or, or moved out of their community.